Hello, this is Danielle Booz, and this is my story and how I overcame various obstacles to live authentically and in my own truth. When I was younger, I was pretty outgoing and I enjoyed spending time with my friends. School was okay. I didn't love school, but I did pretty well in school. And I had a twin sister. We did things together. I had friends. We, we did things together. But in middle school, I was sexually assaulted and I went from being positive, doing well in school to making some pretty bad decisions. I was smoking, I was drinking, I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. I didn't care much about myself. I felt unworthy. I blamed myself. Um, and there was this really dark cloud over my life for, for a long time. And I didn't see the purpose of living. I wasn't suicidal, but I didn't care about life anymore. And it was a tough time, not just for me, but for my family. And my mother tried to get me support through counseling. And we tried that, but I still was spiraling. And I spiraled for years. And what changed for me was giving birth to my daughter. Um, at that time, her father and I, we were both kind of broken people. And he was doing his own thing. I was doing my own thing. He was out selling drugs. And I got pregnant. And I said, you got to do better because we're about to have a kid now. And we can't keep doing what we're doing. So I wanted to clean my act up. And I wanted him to do the same. But he had uh, other decisions for his life. He chose a different path. So I got myself together. And I graduated high school with honors. And I had a little baby girl to depend on. And at that time, I still didn't care enough about myself, but I cared enough about her to want to give her a better life. So I decided to go to college. And I went to North Carolina Central University. Those were the best years of my life. I will forever be a proud eagle, eagle pride all day. I, during that time, was able to deal with the abuse by being an advocate. I would go to local community centers and schools and talk to young people about the signs of sexual abuse and how to keep yourself safe and talk to them about my story specifically. And that was therapy for me, to be able to give back in a way where I helped other people. So I, I did that for, for many years during my college time. And when I graduated from college, I transitioned into the classroom as a family and consumer sciences teacher. And I was able to touch young people on a daily basis. I taught high school. So these kids were transitioning from high school either to college or into the workforce. And I wanted to make sure they were prepared for life after high school. So we had this hobby after school where I would meet with some kids and I would mentor them and I would give them advice and I would link them to community resources and we would talk and like have real discussions about how you going to pay back these student loans or what's the goal if you're not going to college? How are you going to get a job after school to take care of yourself? And that hobby ended up years in the future becoming my nonprofit. But let's stay stay in that area. So uh, I, I taught for a few years and then my son came along and uh, life got hectic again. So now I have two kids and I'm single by myself trying to figure out how I'm going to take care of them. Trying to find myself because although it was therapeutic for me to um, talk about my story, I still hadn't totally healed and there were still some feelings there of not feeling worthy enough. And they showed in my relationships with others, specifically my romantic relationships with others. I wasn't getting it right. And it was because I still needed to work through some stuff within myself. So uh, I transitioned to the Tidewater area. And here in this area is where life really changed for me rapidly. It was a struggle when I first got here. And there are points where it was really hard. And I, I wanted to give up, but I refused to give up. I would sleep in my car sometimes, and my stubborn butt wouldn't let my grandparents know and my mom and them know what was going on because I didn't want them to say, just come back home. 
So I would stay here and, and just work really hard to make my vision a reality. And it eventually evolved for me. I got into the mental health field and that gave me the opportunity to learn a lot about mental health and skill building and, and how to measure different skills. And I used that experience to create Achievable Greatness, my nonprofit, where I help people in the community, young people specifically, to transition. And it's either transition from middle to high school or from high school to college or from high school to military or life after high school. We do all these different transitions. That's what we are about. And when I started the nonprofit, I was still working full time. I was in school full time trying to get my license to be a mental health counselor. I had two kids that I was res responsible for. I was taking care of two kids and I was just doing a lot. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't taking good care of myself. And I had a heart attack, a massive heart attack, had to have surgery. Um, it was a very scary time for me. And I had this talk with God and I told God, look, I say I trust in you. I say I believe in you. And I'm going to start really doing it. So I know you put this in me for a reason. I'm supposed to do this for a reason. So I'm going to trust that you're going to keep a roof over my head. You're going to keep food in my belly. You're going to help me prepare life for my children while I do what I'm purposed to do. And I'm just going to focus on that. And I did that. I focused on my purpose. I went full speed ahead into my nonprofit, and that afforded me the opportunity to help other people who were interested in starting companies. And they would come to me and say, how are you using social media to market, Danielle? How, how are you leveraging so little money? You have very little capital, and you're able to transition that into revenue. How are you doing that? And I would give them pointers, and I would coach them and consult them, and it became another business venture for me. And that has afforded me the opportunity to speak professionally and different platforms to share my message with other individuals and, and show them that no matter what you're going through, you can get through to the other side. And you just have to have faith within yourself and you have to believe that you are worthy. And I love sharing my story because it shows you that you can overcome any obstacle. And I'm a living witness of that. So I'm hopeful that my story blesses you and you are able to see in your own personal story that you're able to overcome any obstacle that comes your way. I pray you blessings. Take care.